So hello everybody, this Friday, so it's time for another Dax Friday, it's a new Dax function every Friday. Into this Dax Friday, we're going to check part two of Dax Fusion because Phil released a new blog post yesterday and it's good, it's very good. So are you ready? Let's get started. Okay guys, so Dax Fusion, I actually did a video a few months ago about what Dax Fusion is and I'm going to link it down below along with both blog posts from Phil, so go and check them out, okay? I'm going to go through it very quickly here, but still I recommend you to go and watch it. So what he shows us in part two is a way to optimize a Dax query, a very specific Dax query, and I believe that as a beginner this is something that you'll do a lot. I did it a lot, at least in the beginning when I started. So this probably will help you improve your query performance, especially if you're a beginner. Okay, let me show you. What I have in front of me is survey data. He has marketing data. So you have two examples. So I have here survey data, and um, let me show you how the data looks like. We have date, and then we have uh, answers. And the answers are all in one place. So we have awful, Excellent, good. So from Dax Fusion, what it tells us is that if you put, let me show you the queries first. So I have, for example, here, excellent. To know how many excellent responses we've got, we've got to go and count. I'm going to show you how these total answers look. Count the number of times that the word excellent shows. So you will do count of where score is equal to excellent. So total answers is basically the count and then I don't want to have uh, blanks. I want to have zeros in this case. Okay, so we have here excellent, I have one for awful, I have one for average, you know the drill, and I, if you put them in different cards like here, what is going to happen is that every single card is going to have to go back to the source, send a query request and then back well if you put everything on one like for example this matrix card with a row card it, it just looks the same but it's just one visual instead of it will do all the requests in one query making it faster good now part two this is what he's telling us he says okay now this is quite common right I, I don't know if you would use a measure, I normally use a measure just because I'm lazy and I want to write it more than once and because if it breaks it would bring you trouble. So he says, yes, do a base measure like you did in here. My base measure is total answers. And then he writes this as likely different. Let me show you. So he says, don't write it like this, write it like this. So we're going to do... excellent version field and it says do like this do max x and then do all score answers and then put your base measure in my case is total answers and multiply it by the score answers where is excellent Now, when I first wrote this, I didn't really pay attention to the syntax, and look what happened. So this is how it suggests to write exactly the same query. Put it in there. So what you can see here is that it's giving us an error because we're comparing values with text, like the count with excellent. And this is, mm -mm -mm, you can't do that. So what he does, and that's quite interesting, and he promised to reveal how that works in another blog post i'm looking forward to that subscribe to his blog so you know too so he puts this between parentheses and you see ah it works how cool is that and then we're, let's put the multi-card and then just get rid of that little um, bar thing and then just increase the text size and then you are back to so few things that you need to have in mind obviously you don't need to create this if you have survey data for example if you want to see the overall scores you can just let me show you 
here, you see you can put answers against total answers and it will give you. So but there are times when you actually need, in this case, I did need it to have the, the specific one for average, so one for good, one for poor. So in that case, it's better to write it the way he did. And for that solution to kick in, you have to put them in the same visual. So in the same table, in the same matrix, in the same whatever. If it isn't different, obviously it's going to send different queries anyway. So it's not going to help you. But okay, guys, so here's the video for Dax Fusion part, in part one if you want to check it out. And in the meantime, this Friday, enjoy your weekend, stay home, stay safe. I'll see you again on Monday. Take care. Bye bye.